What's up everybody and welcome to my, well I hope this is the first and last time I ever say this um, pay-per-view name, but and hopefully there isn't a second one, but welcome to my Great Balls of Fire review. God, that's a stupid name, but um, let's uh, move on with the show, which we had a lot of things go down tonight, some good, some bad, some very screwy, and some very strange, but we'll kick it off with the Cruiserweight match with... Um, Neville versus Akira Tozawa with Titus O'Neil out there uh, as pretty much by ringside. Uh, what do I have to say about this match? It was a pretty good match, I will say that. I enjoyed it, but um, one problem, you guys see a lot of problems about this tonight that I've seen a lot of people talk about, was the finishes. And I enjoyed Neville versus uh, Tozawa. I'm glad the crowd was actually into it. Dallas, so Dallas was actually a really good crowd tonight. Very great crowd, and they were, and they were into the show. But uh, one thing that uh, just the, the whole kicking toes uh, out in the nuts felt kind of off. I didn't think he was gonna just win by a shot to the nuts and then just a uh, shot to the gut then and then Titus is arguing, which was just kind of strange to me really about that whole finish. But then again, like I said before in the past, who do you really have to beat Neville? Like seriously, who is really gonna go beat Neville now? Like we already talked about the whole Austin Aries situation with him being gone and you know. Um, you know, he left. Uh, I already wasn't happy the position he was in, but then again, I don't blame him. I think he was better than what he needed to be in the cruiserweight and should have been facing people on the regular roster than just being stuck in the cruiserweight division because it feels like shit in that division. Even ne like I said before, Neville needs to be out of that division because he's just too damn good. All right, he really is. Did I enjoy the match? Yes, but I just wasn't a fan of the thing. It just looked like that's the finish. I just kind of sat around like so he just kicked him in the nuts and then. The gut, and that was it. So it was just a very odd and weak finish. Neville still looks strong, holds the title. I don't really know who else can be next. The only person I can really see will be going against Neville next. I'm just taking a guess on this as a Mustafa Ali. Um, next was Bray Wyatt versus Seth Rollins. And why did we need to have this old school driving movie to what is whole pay per view? And Wyatt versus Seth Rollins was a good match. I'll say that, but. Bray Wyatt, he pretty much, I'm even surprised he actually won a match, but um, he just won with a thumb to the eye, and then his sister Abigail and won. I enjoyed the match, but then again, I really don't want to see more of this feud to begin anyways, because it didn't make sense coming into this. Because all you really saw throughout this whole feud was what Bray Wyatt cutting promos about him being a god, and instead of doing it in a dark room, maybe JoJo's closet, and then doing it in the Phoenix, Arizona desert. All Seth Rollins already talked about, and now on the announcers and everybody said about him was just being Mr. WWE 2K, 2K18 on the cover, pretty much. That's all they told him to be on the cover. I don't really want to see more of this feud. I think Seth needs to be somewhat bigger and stuff. And he said he's going to make Seth Rollins burn. He didn't really need to see him burn. He did some of some fire. And I don't know why it won, but I'm sure we're going to see more weird, crazy promos with Wyatt and Seth. So, this feud isn't over by a long shot. I don't really think it needs to happen. Because I just think fans are now so desensitized that they kind of just killed Bray Wyatt when you look at it. We're so used to him losing. It's like we don't give two fucks about Bray Wyatt anymore at this point. Because it's like he doesn't matter because we usually know he's going to lose. Come on, let me go back to WrestleMania Mania with him in the WWE title. So, um, I think that says enough. Uh, Enzo was getting ready to go against Cass, which Enzo was out there cutting Frank Sinatra songs of That's Life, which went very long, really, if you ask me. He got a great reaction coming out there, and he says, Cass, you're just seven foot tall, and that's it, and you'll always be in my shadow because I'm larger than life. And I, I felt Enzo's promo went off on me. I felt the crowd got lost. Like, there ain't anybody. I felt lost throughout it, too, both the crowd and them. I mean, I just... I just feel they give him, and don't get me wrong, Enzo's a great talker, but even I got feel like they give him a lot of mic time now for some reason before a match, and that was longer than the match, I felt like. Cass came up some whatever generic rock music and whatever, and he pretty much beat up Enzo. The Spanish chant Castle and Let's Go Enzo. He pretty much threw him out of ringside, and he got up for the 10 count, and pretty much Cass hit him with um, two big boots, I believe. Um, to the head, that was a one big boot, and he just won. 
really uneventful. It wasn't enough much in this match other than we all kind of knew Cass would beat Enzo in general. I never really saw Enzo winning these things or this feud continuing in general. I just thought it would be year done, that's it. Cass beats him, destroys him. Move on, call it a day. Where does Enzo go from here? I have no idea, but everyone mostly says Cruiserweight. Cass, somehow, some way, they'll try a way to push Cass somewhere to the moon, but the match was just uneventful at best. I know some people, I don't know why I'm even going to quote this, but a lot of people compare him to Tess now for some reason back then. I don't know why, but they compare him to Tess. Like, I heard a minute, but I didn't really think that at first. But this match was just kind of, kind of a dud. When you look at this, it, kind of a dud. Um, next was one of the best matches of the night. The 30-minute Iron Man match between Sheamus and Zara versus the Hardys for the titles right immediately out the gate. Um, Sheamus and Zara pretty much get the first point by, uh, um, Cesaro pretty much, uh, ducking under Maddie and Sheamus in the broke kick, won the, won the zero, getting the second win, um, 10 minutes in the match, getting two, doing the, uh, double team move, and as Matt came in, did poetry, did the poetry in motion, and I did like the, um, d everybody doing the d delete, 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 delete chance with Matt smashing Cesaro's head into the, um, to the um, wall, I believe, not the wall, to the turnbuckle was really cool, which the match somewhat got a little slow at first throughout a second, but there was a lot of chants, um, most of the delete chants and brother New York chants out there too, the Hardys were able to come back then, and pretty much, like I said, the poetry and motion, and a, poetry and motion, and a twist of fate, but Seamus is all able to get a three after a count out being on Matt Hardy, knocking him to the floor, uh, Jeff came back, was from the win, pretty much did his knees out there, uh, about his swan time. But uh, they pretty much Jeff did the little Fisher batter move, was Matt pretty much hit him with a uh, backslide, and that was 3 to 2. And after the Tornado DDT, uh, Matt hit a moonsault, and his was one of the uh, cool moves. After Matt pretty much hit him with a twist of fate, and it, twist of fate, it was 3 to 3, but, um, the thing about this uh, match was both of Matt and Jeff doing a double splash over each ropes. And this was really a scary thing for Matt Hardy here. When Matt Hardy did that, Matt Hardy's face immediately bled. I think he cut like his eye right here to the side. It looked really nasty, I'll say that. And with the time winding down, um, coming into the final 30 seconds, Jeff had a swan time on Sheamus, but since Cesaro was the leader man, he pretty much got the pin. And it was 4 to 3, like 20 seconds left. Cesaro just pretty much ran the stall time as Jeff chased him and hit a twist of fate, but he was too late. And Seamus and Cesaro got the win. So it was a really great match. One of the best of the night, really. So it was an Iron Man match. They stalled for a minute, but the crowd was really into it and got him back and forth. But I will say it was a very nasty gash on Matt Hardy's face right there after um, doing that splash from up top. Just cut his whole eye, like whole face face was just bleeding all over the place. Where do they go through here, come from here, I'm not really sure, but then again, it's like some say, what other tag teams do you have legit to go against um, Shamus and Cesaro other than the Hardys? I don't know if the Revival's still hurt, but that's the only people I can think of left. Um, there is no more ends on Chaos, there is no Goldus and uh, Truth, um, Gals and Anderson are just freaking jobbers at this point. Um, it's not a lot of people, really, when you think about it. It really isn't. So, maybe I'm missing a tag team. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe I am, but that's all I can think of when it comes to the tag teams and stuff. So, it was a really good match. Well, I'm sure, I, mean, I feel like this may not be over and the Hardys will come back, but, you know, um, Matt Pierce got a big cut on his face tonight. Alexa Bliss only has Sasha Banks for the Women's Championship, which the match was, um, it's so good. It was okay. But then, the fuck finish. And one thing I thought was kind of weird, especially with the Raw commentators, that they don't even watch SmackDown, is that Alexa Bliss did that double jointed thing with her arm, just to, like she did on SmackDown with uh, Becky, just to take out Sasha, distract the ref. But in the act, like they didn't know. So we kind of know the whole thing with the dislocated, double jointed arm thing, and she used it to her advantage. But um, it was a great match. Well, I'm not sorry, not a great match, but I thought it was a good match, especially with him that needs, uh, needs to the head thing on Sasha. But when it kind of came down to the end, Sasha hit the bank statement, 
Bliss was able to get out of the wing. She tried to pull Bliss back in, but um, Bliss pretty much knocked her, and it ended in a um, a DQ. I'm sorry, not a DQ, a count out. So there you want to know if I finish tonight a a count out, folks, which is actually going to be a good match, but a count out. And then after that, Sasha pretty much chased from behind and knocked into the the barricade and and everything and pretty much um, Bliss was about to do something on the top of the announce table with Sasha pretty much hit the double knees thing after throwing off the announce table to the floor hit the double knees thing to the floor which even Alexa Bliss was bleeding out there she bled from me almost stuck through her mouth or her nose because Sasha must hit the knees real hard and I think they'll just continue this feud all the way to SummerSlam most likely and they'll get a one-on-one -on -one thing from there and maybe Sasha will win but um, there was just a lot of weird, like I said, there's been a lot of weird finishes, and I get the, the thing with the cruise with the kick to the nuts, um, even Wyatt winning was just kind of weird to me, um, Cass and Enzo was just a very uneventful match, oh, and there's one thing, um, um, people were against tonight was the referee, they all chanted, ref, you suck. Ref, you suck, especially during the Hardys match when Matt actually kicked out of the three and the ref people get mad at him. And this comes in later to the match also, because the referees make a lot of bad decisions that the people just turned on the referee. Alright, they, they turned on the ref. But the, the women's match was good, it's okay for what it was. Another dud match tonight, uh, Miz versus Dean Ambrose. Does this feud ever end? Pretty much, you got another screwy finish right here, which they got mad at the ref again because you would have kicked all three of these people out. Both Maurice, all three Maurice, Bo Dallas, who almost dresses like his brother now, or a biker, and Curtis Axel, which they all got involved with. And they hit the skull crush finale, and even people still chanted, ref, ref, you suck, and that counting them out. So even I had to say, why didn't they count them out? And why is this feud still going? And I feel this feud is going to keep going now because I don't think it's the end of it. Just because Miz had three other people out there. And I don't think the crowd was, the crowd was flat throughout this match. I don't think they care. Or maybe this is just overexposed at this point. But they've been doing this feud ever since on SmackDown. And ever when they came to Raw, this feud has continued into going and going. And it looks like no means of stopping. stopping. So I don't get why we need to see more of this Ambrose and Miz thing. But it's just gotten really lame. Uh, Roman Reigns went against Braun Strowman ambulance match, which was one of the best matches of the night. Also, well, very over the top and crazy from P Braun Strowman getting the big pop out there, Roman getting booed, and um, Strowman just throwing Reigns out of the rings everywhere. Even Roman and Samoa drop dead lifting Braun Strowman, knocking to the um, pretty much to the um, ring post, seeing him with a chair, but. Uh, Strowman no sold the chair for a few minutes and pretty much grabbed a chair and sent Reigns up the barricade throwing them all over the place and was going to put him through the announce table but he didn't throw him to the ambulance Reigns was able to make it back up which he threw him into the barricade but it didn't go I mean the LED screen it didn't go through until he spe speared him and he, pushed him, he, you know, he threw him through again which he was on the ground he had to drag him to the, to the ambulance so he had to do what he had to get him in somehow after Sherman tried to get him in there, but as he pushed him through the video wall, the screen or whatever, um, he tried to push him, but Strowman threw him off the the stage then, which um, uh, Strowman pretty much ever got him up to the floor, he just threw the stuff out the ambulance, and Roman was able to hit him with one of the lights, and he was about to hit a spear once everything was moved out of the way. When Roman ran into the spear, I thought he looked like an idiot for a second, but it was funny. He just went into the spear and crashed all the way into the uh, ambulance. He literally just ran into it, alright? He speared himself into the ambulance. Just just like going for a spear and ran in there and Strowman just sidestepped it and he closed the door and the match was over. But then Roman opened the ambulance door, came back, beat up Strowman, hit him with the door multiple times. Threw him back there, threw out the driver, drove up the thing. He drove up the with the, the ambulance going somewhere. Looked in the rearview mirror, which was probably a pre-tape, and crashed into a production truck. And pretty much people just 
starts showing up and trying to take photos as Kurt Angle just looked over there like, what is this? And Jamie Noble trying to use a crowbar trying to open the thing. So, and I said this in a video and a lot of reaction. I, I already know somebody said something about this, but I said they pretty much made Roman look super strong out here tonight. He looks super strong now. But I guess how could he if he's using an ambulance to beat up to nearly like, attempted murder on Strowman at this point? But I guess it only works when, uh, you know, Roman's getting the crap beaten out of him, and then Roman wins at one move because he can just take anything, folks. But I just thought they did. And did they make him look strong? Hell yeah, they made him look fucking really strong, man. Especially just jumping out of the ambulance and beating the crap out of Strowman. And then we get this random ass match with Kurt Hawkins and Heath Slater, which nobody saw since they focused throughout the whole night. And somehow, some way, the bell rang and they said Heath Slater won. Maybe they had a five star match out there. I'll never know. But, um,. As they had to get the jaws of life to open the ambulance, um, Strowman Rimmage came out bleeding all over the place, his arm, his face, he was bleeding, they tried to, sh to shove him away, and Strowman actually got to his feet, but he kept falling all over the place, he and Kurt Angle looked struck, pretty much uh, shocked, and Strowman walked out saying, leave me alone, and he walked away, into the darkness somewhere. So... At least he looked strong coming out of an ambulance, because I don't know how that was going to work. And this took a lot of time, right? Like, this whole thing was a lot of time in this match, even throughout this whole ambulance segment here, too. They had a lot of time in this. But the ambulance match was great. It was all over the place, all right? Just Roman Reigns with attempted murder. And, you know, once I'll say one thing about this page tonight. Like, you saw a lot of blood, and you saw a lot of attempted murder. You got Alex out here bleeding. You got uh, Matt Hardy bleeding really badly. Um, who, who else is bleeding? Dean Ambrose bleeding from the mouth in the IC title match. So you, you saw a lot of blood and some attempted murder in this pay-per-view tonight. And we got to the main event. It wasn't a lot of time left. And I don't know if this took away from it and everything. Because I'm like, wow, this is going to be a short match looking at the time frame for this. It was Brock Lesnar and Samoa Joe. Um, uh, Samoa Joe. And... I'll say this, for the time given they had, the crowd was into it, and did Joe looked strong, hell yeah, he looked strong out there, for the, for, which I counted was 6 minutes and 25 seconds they had, it's pretty much one more minute over Goldberg, and this could have been longer, I'll admit, it was a bit too short, alright, don't get me wrong, but I guess I'm used to Brock Lesnar matches being short nowadays and stuff, but for um, 6 minutes, Joe literally went in his Brock, as Paul Heyman was announcing Brock Lesnar, he pretty much had a year and Nagy through the table. Brock and, and Heyman just trying to gather what they could do is Joe just looked at him and people chanted, Joe is gonna kill you. And Lesnar pretty much got up to his feet and wanted to continue to match. Joe went at him, but um, and started pretty much hitting that uh, kick and pretty much multiple knees. So Brock came back with the knees then. Trying to go around Joe, and then they probably don't wrestle each other to the ground. I guess hit a suplex and stuff, but Joe got the um the choke, but the coquina clutch. But uh, Joe was hit, but Lesnar got out of it, hit three German suplexes, and was about to go for another. But Joe held onto the rope and pretty much kicked Brock in the nuts if the ref didn't see it. As he made sure the ref didn't see it, and then he hit a, a Uranagi on him, tried to get the win. But then he went for the Kakina Clutch to the end, which looked like it was actually working, and Brock was going down. He was going down. He was starting to turn red and stuff. But Brock went and slammed him with a sidewalk slam, and then went back to hitting more suplexes again and again and again. Three more German suplexes. It was six. He tried to hit F5, but Joe got it. He got the choke again. He, I thought he was going to choke him out. But Lesnar backed him into the corner. Joe just held on, and Brock was just turning colors as Heyman was just screaming out there. Brock eventually got out of it. He picked up Joe one at five and got the win. So was it short? Yes it was. With the time given uh they had it was really good. The crowd was into it and you almost thought um Brock was gonna win it in a way. And stuff. You almost not Brock, you almost thought Joe was gonna win it in a way really. I almost thought he could have had. I said, wow, he's, he's making slight worries. Maybe Joe will win. But, um, I don't know. Maybe the ambulance match took away from this a lot. Because even I thought they were in a bad spot at one point, too, because of the ambulance match. 
Yeah, they only had six minutes. Brock pretty much won. Hit the F5. Joe just kind of looked on and stuff. But um, Brock, even though he turned nearly red throughout this whole thing, he was very much on his feet and he retained the title. Does this continue through here? I don't know. I'm not really sure um, what happens next. If they continue this feud or they move on to Roman. Or they move on to somebody else. They maybe Finn Balor in a shot maybe. By the way, we didn't see a lot of people on this show that were supposed to have matches tonight on here. Number one, you didn't get Finn. It has to be Finn versus Samson. The Goldust versus Truth didn't happen still. And after this, it was supposed to be Bailey versus Nia Jax. And one thing I even thought was even weird is that through all the matches that had a lot of blood on them, the match you expected would have had blood would have been Brock and Joe. Brock and Joe didn't have any type of blood. So, I thought that was, um, kind of weird. Like, they, they the ones that did not have blood, but everybody else knew they had blood in their matches. Or some type of bloody scene out there. So, the, the match you expected to be, you didn't have it. And yeah, even I think they could have had maybe 10 minutes, but they're already at the end of the show, and there was a lot of time left anyways. Because, as I said, it's going to be a 5 or 6 minute match, and hey, it was a 6 minute and 25 second match. So, if you're giving these guys 15 minutes to beat the crap out of each other, it would have been, like, insane. But, they did what they did, what they could. It was good. Just wish they had enough time. As for this show tonight, in my opinion, I kind of gave it a C. A C, or a 3 out of 5. Why? Well, the things that were great was the ambulance match. The tag team match was great, and I guess you say Brock versus uh, uh, Joe, great match, but you know, just the time that was given, just just kind of very anticlimactic after one at five. All right, very anticlimactic. Um, Enzo and Cass was just kind of whatever, which we got to Cass gonna destroy him. I see title. I just don't care about this feud now no more, and I knew just a lot of screwy finishes tonight throughout this. Um, who else? Finn versus, uh, Seth, which I still think Seth needs better, but hey, we got to continue this thing with Finn somehow. Cruiserweight match good, but once again, another screwy finish. Uh, women's match was good too, but hey, another fuck finish too, but that was even a Sunner Slam. But they had a good match for what it was, and I'll say that. But, uh, like I said, there were some people probably missing from the show that you expected to see on here, but they, they weren't on there tonight. I already expected Finn versus Elias Sampson, but hey, it didn't happen. But uh, I'm going to roll in here, check out my live reactions um, for um, Great Balls of Fire. Hopefully just the last time we ever call a pay-per-view like this again. I'll be in the second one. And we'll just end it from there and they start paying Jerry Lewis all this money. So yeah, now one more thing, especially important news, I should have did a video on this. Hey, AJ Styles won the United States Championship at, the, at a Madison Square Garden, at a house show really, in Madison Square Garden. The other night, on this Friday, so I was very surprised in the seat here about that. I'm sure we'll get footage, I mean, the footage probably on YouTube anyway, so hey, congratulations to him. Because you know where you see a lot of title changes, especially at a house show, a house show, really, of all places. So that was very unexpected after he won that Battle Royale on Tuesday. What does this mean for Battleground? I don't know, we'll have to find out on Tuesday, whatever detail comes out next before, after that. But, hey, really surprising uh, win for AJ Styles to get the U.S. title now. At, uh, in the garden at a house show. But I'm out of here. Check out my live reactions. Everything with you, all that will be up. Peace out.